Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Acetazolamide, commonly known by its brand name Diamox, which comes under the category of so-called diuretics, which increase the urine output, but used for variety of medical conditions. And I am sure you must have heard of it that it is being prescribed to you or your friend or somebody or somebody. So in this video, let's look at how Diamox works, that is its mechanism of action, what are the uses of Diamox and of course what are the adverse effects of Diamox in detail but with simple words. So make sure you watch this video till the end so that you get complete information about Diamox. Diamox or acetazolamide is an enzyme inhibitor which means it prevents the action of one of the enzyme. So obviously the next question is that which is that enzyme? The enzyme which acetazolamide inhibits is called as carbonic anhydrase. And obviously the next question is what does this enzyme carbonic anhydrase do? Or which chemical reaction does it help in carrying out? If you remember your chemistry classes, you might remember a very simple equation where CO2 reacts with H2O that is carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid or H2CO3 which then dissociates into bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion. This is the chemical reaction which is carried out with the help of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. And acetazolamide or Diamox inhibits this enzyme. Now what happens if acetazolamide inhibits this enzyme? The effect of this chemical reaction is different in different body parts. So obviously the effect of Diamox is different in different body parts and hence it is used for variety of medical conditions. So what exactly happens that we shall see under the uses of Diamox for different medical conditions. Let us divide it into neuro or brain related uses and all the others or non neuro related uses. After all, I am a brain doc. So coming to the brain related uses, of course, before going to the uses, we need to understand the role of carbonic anhydrase and the chemical reaction which I mentioned previously in brain. So before going to that, let us consider few facts about brain. Let me try to make it as simple as possible. Inside the brain, there is a kind of fluid called as cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. So this CSF is present inside a space called as ventricle. So this basically is produced in the ventricle by a structure called as choroid plexus. From there, it flows in the ventricular system, goes out, goes to what's called a subarachnoid space and eventually gets absorbed. So this is a continuous process which is happening inside all our brain. So as I told, this CSF is produced by a structure called as choroid plexus, which is present inside the ventricle. This production of CSF by the choroid plexus requires carbonic anhydrase enzyme. And by giving Diamox, what we are doing is we are decreasing the production of CSF. If you want to learn superficially, this should be more than enough. But if you want to learn deeply, I will go slightly deeper into that. If it's too much, you just skip one minute. So this CSF is obviously required for different functions. Most important being protecting the brain. Now, how is this produced? In the choroid plexus, inside the choroid plexus, this chemical reaction takes place. This chemical reaction that is H2O combining with CO2 forming bicarbonate ion and H plus takes place inside the cell. From here, bicarbonate is transported actively into the outside of the cell and H plus is transported in exchange for sodium. So this creates an osmotic gradient which leads to secretion of fluid into the ventricular system which is nothing but cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. So in short, carbonic anhydrase is required in the secretion of CSF and by giving Diamox, we are decreasing the production of CSF. So let's see where all it can be used. 
coming to the users in the nervous system one is in case of leak of csf through the nose or ear maybe following an injury to the head or following an operation or other causes this condition is called as csf rhinorrhea if it's leaking through the nose or csf otorrhea if it is leaking through the ear so in these conditions we prescribe diamox of course this may be combined with other medicines or other modes of treatment like an operation as you know brain is inside the skull which is made up of bone so it's a closed structure so if one increases there will be shortage of space for the other so this increased pressure inside the skull which may happen because of multiple reasons is called as raised icp or raised intracranial pressure so if there is a situation where we may need to decrease the icp sometimes we prescribe diamox so that the amount of csf inside the brain slightly decreases which in turn decreases the icp and of course this is combined with other modes of treatment as well there is another condition called as benign intracranial hypertension again the same mechanism here the drug of choice is again diamox to decrease the intracranial pressure then of course as i told you the main use is in decreasing csf so imagine a situation where csf itself is high called as hydrocephalus so diamox can be used in the treatment of hydrocephalus again combined with other modes of treatment which could be surgery or any other treatment let us now look at the non neuro uses of diamox i told in the beginning diamox is considered as a diuretic or it increases the urine output now let's see how it does that normally what happens inside the renal so called tubular system this reaction co2 with h2o forming bicarbonate ion and h plus all these things takes place and as i told previously h plus gets absorb gets uh, exchanged to sodium ion so as a result what happens sodium is reabsorbed back so along with sodium water also gets reabsorbed this is what happens normally but if you give diamox what happens the reabsorption of sodium and water does not take place and as a result there is increased quantity of urine output and that is why it's called as a diuretic well it's used uh, as a diuretic yes it is done but of course there are better diuretics available and obviously it depends on the exact indication why a diuretic may be required it is also used in a condition called as open angle glaucoma what happens here is just like how it decreases the amount of csf in the brain it also decreases the amount of what is called as aqueous humor which is a fluid inside the eye and as a result just like how it decreases the intracranial pressure it also decreases the intraocular pressure which is elevated in open angle glaucoma and hence diamox is used as a treatment in open angle glaucoma with of course other modes of treatment as well other uses could be in the treatment of what is called as metabolic alkalosis now all of you know bicarbonate ion is responsible for alkalosis so because of that chemical reaction there is a lot of bicarbonate ion which is produced and of course by inhibiting that chemical reaction we are decreasing the amount of bicarbonate ions and as a result ph will come down so this is how it is used in the treatment of metabolic alkalosis but also remember that the other way that is metabolic acidosis is a common adverse effect after administration of the drug diamox it is used in the treatment of what is called as mountain sickness which mainly has two extreme forms which is h a c e and h a p e here the exact mechanism is slightly complicated but in short what i would say is diamox will decrease the amount of fluid accumulation in the brain as happens in case of hac and in the lungs as happens in case of hape and it will also decrease the chances of damage to these organs because of decreased oxygen well now that we looked at the mechanism of action and uses of diamox let us look at some of the adverse effects of diamox 
but let me tell you very clearly that when your doctor is prescribing you Dimox, of course, he is taking into consideration all these possibilities and of course, he would either monitor or already give necessary corrective measures to take care of them. So, if your doctor has prescribed you Dimox, do not hesitate to take it just by seeing this video. Okay, coming to the adverse effects, I told previously that it will decrease the amount of bicarbonate ions leading to decrease in pH, increase in the acidosis. So, that is the first adverse effect that it is it causes metabolic acidosis, which is usually not very severe. But if the patient also has some other pre-existing problem like a kidney disease or a lung associated disease, then yes, this can be severe. I mentioned kidney disease and lung disease because these are the two organs which are very important in maintaining the pH of the blood. So, if they are already not in optimally con working condition, then yes, the patient can have metabolic acidosis. And sometimes a syrup called as syrup citralka is given along with uh, Diamox to decrease the effect of metabolic acidosis. But again, this may not be uh, sufficient enough to prevent the damage if the patient already has some other condition. But as I told previously, your doctor would have taken into consideration all these things before prescribing Diamox to you. Apart from this, it can cause some amount of electrolyte imbalance that is decreased amount of potassium, decreased amount of sodium called as hypokalemia or hyponatremia respectively. Again, because of what I told previously, that is reabsorption of sodium is affected at the kidneys and as a result, sodium is washed out of the kidneys in the urine. Along with that, uh, some uh, I would call it discomfort, that is increased urine output. Of course, it's xyrotic, it is going to increase the urine output, so the patient will have to visit washroom multiple times. Uh, it can slightly alter your taste sensation again uh, may not be seen one of the rare I would say so slight amount of alteration in the taste sensation can be there and all the other adverse effects which in fact can be there with any medicine that is some amount of nausea some occasional vomiting or gastritis so these adverse effects too can be there and very 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 occasionally there can be other severe adverse effects too but there is no point going into that uh, because they are very 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 rare so these were a few points uh, about uh, not so very uncommonly used drug that is diamox or acetazolamide i hope you found this uh, video informative if so make sure uh, give it a thumbs up share it with those who have uh, taken diamox in the past if you know any and for more such informative videos Subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.